Today, I will take you through interpreting your regression output in Stata. That is, how can you explain the basic features once you have a regression output if you are a Stata user? I have launched my Stata and my data has been imported into Stata domain. If you are a first time Stata user and you still don't know how you can import your file, make sure you watch my previous video on how you can do this. So I'm going to type browse in my command box section and that will show me what I have in Stata. I have two variables, income and PCE. Income is the depend is the explanatory variable and PCE is the dependent variable. I have 50 observations from 1960 to 2009. So from my data editor browser, this is what I have to run this analysis. We begin by typing the simple command for Stata, that is REG, which means regress. The PCE comes first, which is a dependent variable, followed by the independent variable income. I press the Enter key, and here is my output from Stata. But whenever you have these, how do you interpret them? What do all those figures mean? What do they stand for? I will begin by talking about the first one, number of observations, 50. This one simply means your sample size. Remember I told you I have a data from 1960 to 2009. So simply 50 observations is my entire sample. The F value of over 65,000 here tells me how jointly significant my independent variables are in predicting the dependent variable. So the higher the F statistics, the better my model, and that tells me that my variables, that is the independent variables, are jointly significant to explain the dependent variable. So that is what this your F stands for. The prop value of the F statistics tells me the significance of the F value. So if this P value is lower than 5% or at 5%, the better my model. So it tells me how significant the independent variables are in explaining the dependent variable. The R squared also tells me the total variation in the dependent variable that are explained by my independent variables. So the higher the R squared, the better the model. Adjusted R squared here will give you a value whenever you increase your independent variable. So this R squared can even be negative if you have too many independent variables in your model. Root MSC is simply the standard error of the entire regression. I come to this section and I explain. SS simply means sum of squared residuals. And the sum of squared residuals is divided into two components, the one for the model and the one for the residual. The one for the model are those ones obtained within the model. The ones on the residuals are those ones obtained outside your model. Those outcomes that are due to randomness. Next, I'll explain degree of freedom. The degree of freedom for the model is computed by using this formula K minus 1. K here stands for the number of restrictions in your model. And the total number of restrictions is made up of the intercepts and the total number of independent variables that you have. In my own case, k equals 2 because I only have one independent variable and an intercept. So k minus 1 gives you the degree of freedom for your model. The degree of freedom for the residual is computed as n minus k. n here means 50 number of observations minus k. k, remember, equals 2. So 50 minus 2 gives you 48. The MSCS stands for mean sum of squares. How do you obtain that? Simply divide the sum of square residuals by the respective degree of freedom, and you obtain the mean sum of squares. Next, I move on to the last component of the table. I've already explained before that PCE is my dependent variable, is the outcome variable, is a regressant in this model. Income is the independent variable, is a predictor variable, and is a regressor. Cons here simply means constant or intercept of my regression line. The coefficient here simply refers to estimates of both my independent variable and the constant. And the sign 
of this coefficient tells you the direction of the relationship between the independent variable and the, and the uh, dependent variable. So always watch out for the sign for you to know whether it's a negative relationship or a positive relationship. Next is the standard error, which shows the deviation of the coefficient. It tells you how much deviation occurs from predicting the slope of your model. So the standard ter error tells you how much deviation has occurred from predicting the slope coefficient. The t value is next. And what does it tell us? It measures the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from zero. So there is a total deviation from it being zero. So this is what the t value tells you. And you can also compute it by dividing the coefficient by its respective standard error. So again, the t value measures the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from zero. Next one there is the p-value of the t statistics. The p-value has many interpretations, but I'll just give you the basic and the simplest one. It is the smallest evidence available or required to reject the null hypothesis. The p-value here is the smallest evidence that you require to reject the null hypothesis. It also tells you how significant the coefficient is. The last component on this table is a 95% confidence interval. This interval will always contain a coefficient if it is significant. If that coefficient is not significant, it will fall outside this confidence interval. Let's look at the coefficient of income. It's 0.8192. Let's co come back to the 95% confidence interval. The lower bound is 0.812. The upper bound is 0.825. So we can see here that 0.8192 lies in this interval. So whenever your coefficient is significant, it is certain that it lies within this 95% confidence interval. So whenever you have a stator output, these are the basic interpretations that you require in understanding what you have. So I'll wrap up this tutorial by just giving you some hints on what we've done so far today. Observations re refers to total observations in your data. Your F value, the higher the value, the better for your model. The prop value tells you how significant the F statistics is. That is the prop value for the F statistics. Your R square tells you the variation explained in the dependent variable by the regressors. So the higher the R squared, remember, the better the model and the more predictive power the variables have. Adjusted R squared, it reduces as more explanatory variables are added. And if you have too many explanatory variables, you may end up having a negative R squared. Root MSC is just the standard error of the regression. The sum of squared residuals is made up of two components, the explained sum of squares and the residual sum of squares. Degree of freedom is calculated as K minus 1. K means number of restrictions. And for the residual is n minus k. The n there stands for number of observations. The coefficient in this case captures the estimates for the intercept and the slope. And remember, the sign of the coefficient tells you the direction of the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. The standard error, again, is the standard deviation of the coefficient. It shows you how much deviation has occurred from predicting the slope coefficient. The t-statistics, again, measures the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from zero. And you can compute that by dividing the coefficients by its standard error. The prop value of the t-statistics is the smallest evidence you have to reject the null hypothesis. And lastly, the 95% confidence interval will always contain a slope coefficient if that coefficient is significant. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Make sure you visit our website and our blog for detailed notes on this tutorial.